good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are in the world, and welcome to The Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. And it brings me great, great pleasure to introduce Carrie Irene Crosby. Welcome, Carrie. Hey, how are you? I'm, I do feel very welcome. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you here on the show. And, you know, instead of me creating these labels of what you do, I'm going to have you introduce yourself because you just bring in that higher plane for me. <laughs> All right. so my name is Carrie Irene Crosby. I am from a little town called Shelby, North Carolina. I'm a country bumpkin and I love being a country bumpkin. Um, and I'm just, I'm just so blessed to be on this human journey so that I can figure out every single day who I want to be. Mm. You know, that, that's really what, that who I am. I, I, you know, like you were saying, like sometimes we get hung up in labels and we don't really want to set them for people, but also a lot of times we don't want to set them for themselves. And, and I, I truly am just in a fluid space in my life where I just wake up every day and I just, I'm excited about who I'm going to show up as. You know, I, I do several things. Now I own a nonprofit, ATBA Impact Group. I own a coaching business, it's ATBA Impact Group as well, synonymous of each other. Um, and I also own my own video production um, business where I craft branding for people, I capture moments. Um, I really like to put a visual to people's passion. So that's what I do with my business stutter styles. Um, I do empowerment events. I like to speak. I like to MC. I like to sing. I like to paint. I like to dance, you know? So it's like, yes. instead of glad, I just wake up every day and say, well, what do I want to pick from the plethora today? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And you know, it's so funny. I remember when I was uh, coming up and I was just basically like, okay, what job do I want? And what I realized later in my life is that no, no, no. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the characteristics of life that I like, and I'm going to oh, create yeah. what I like to do around that instead of oh, yeah. having what I have to do, you know, somebody's box yeah. Yeah. and, and I'm not circle fitting in, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Because I mean, I want to cut my edges off. I like my edges. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So life has been a journey. And um, what I would love for you to share is just a little bit of your journey, not just your journey in terms of like uh, 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 what you have to do or what you've done in work, but your journey in terms of um let's talk about a spiritual leap, a journey where it led to a spiritual leap. Because- wow, that's, no, that's, no, because what, go ahead. Because, because, you, because we come from multiple perspectives. We don't come right. from a single perspective. We come from the participant, we come from the teacher, we come from the coach, we come from all aspects. So yeah. because we have like that 360 degree view, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like, it's a leap in dimension. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you know, we are constantly doing just that by just thoughts that we have. When you think of a thought, and that thought in and of itself had to be birthed from your either experience or expectations, which automatically puts us in two different directions. Because if we're coming from, you know, a thought that you know would stem from something that's happened. And we're also take that thought to what we want to happen and come of it. We're constantly back and we're bouncing back and forth from dimension to dimension to dimension to dimension. Right. So when you're talking about that spiritual leap, I think the biggest leap here lately that I've been taking is back to now. Because I've spent a lot of time thinking about what I can tweak from what I've known. And I spent a lot of time trying to take that tweak and apply it and see how it's going to come end up. And this spiritual leap now back to self has been one of the scariest because that's when you really only focus on what do I see and what do I want to do right now in this moment? 
not worrying about the outcome because you can predict all day. And that's the only thing that that's going to do is just cause you much more cognitive dissonance between where you want to be and where you are. But if you can learn to leap back inside, to go back deep from where, you know, you began with just originality and acting in the moment. Like when you were born, you didn't, wasn't thinking about what you were going to do when you was in college. No. <laughs> but a lot of us in college are thinking about what we're going to do when we retire. That's way further off than from a baby to, co- to high school. Yeah. You know? And we put ourselves so far out there when really we can say is today I have an extra $20 and I'll put it aside and not touch it. Something that simple, but we try to make things so catastrophic and we're leaping from the past to the future to the past to the future. We need to be wherever you are right now. If it's not here, leap in and say in this very moment, What is it that I need to do? So for me right now, the biggest spiritual leap is quitting my job. And I, you know, y'all thought I was going to say something real spiritual, real deep, didn't you? No, no, no. I understand. Right. Because everything is spiritual. And right now, my attachment to the structure of having a, a consistent income from something that's building something other than what I'm passionate about is very incongruent with what I feel like happiness should feel like. So I've been trying to, like you said, take this circle and push it into this square of a job and then frustrate it with the job because I have set expectations, futuristic things for this job to do for me now, to free me with money, to free me with its schedule. No, that's not an oxymoron. I want to have a set, set schedule so I can free up my time. Now, did that sound right? No, it doesn't. A it's so funny, though. That's how we think. That's, that's, how, that's we think. how we think. I mean, if you take what you said, you said some powerful statements in there. Number one, you said that it's incongruent, right? But yet, people project that incongruence onto us all over the place. And sometimes we don't even we don't even get to the point where you are. We're so worried about what people are going to think. Yep. and what our families are going to say and mm-hmm. what the expectations that everybody have of us are mm-hmm. that we don't even get to the point where you're at, which is like having that dialogue with yourself to say, what is it that I truly, truly want? And can mm-hmm. I respect it right here, right now and stand yeah. in my truth, no matter yeah. what anyone thinks? Yeah, yeah. And it's unfortunate that we do keep ourselves in that state of comparing it to what other people's idea of what we're doing are. Now, some we do have responsibilities. Some people have children. Some people have loved ones that they're caregiver for. Some people have, you know, um, some things that they claim is their disability that keeps them from doing certain things. There are so many factors that are present and that are true, that comes into the planning process. But you don't have to negate what's happening, what's true, in order to devise a plan with those things, you know, factored in and still leap. Right. And still leap back in the self, not to the future, not to the past, not to his thought, not to her thought, not to her needs, his needs, expectations, none of that. But go back into yourself and say, okay, yes, Oh, that I want to please my children. I do know I want to take care of my children, but that's not because of them. That's because of who I am. Make sure you know who you are with it. Don't attach that responsibility. Oh, I got to take care of my kids. No, I enjoy taking care of my kids. What's going to be the best way for me to do that? What's going to make me feel good? What's not going to stress me out? Because sometimes just because your job is making a whole lot of money and you can give your kids the Jordans, and the this and the that, but you can't give them your time or your love or your patience because you burn out and you don't want to hear nothing that they got to say. So you sprinkle a couple of dollars on it and you wonder why your kid is disrespecting you. It's because you did an addiction. <laughs> and, it's also, an addiction. <laughs> and it's also called the law of attraction. If you are disrespecting you, that's why not just your kids, but everything is... If it, some, some of us be like, these jeans are disrespecting me because why are they fitting like this? 
<laughs> if you disrespecting what you're putting in your mouth, <laughs> they're going to disrespect your circulation. You know? Everything uh, is every, the law of Everything. Everything, everything, everything is true. And you know, the other thing that I want to mention too, that as you did this observance internally, um, you also didn't go, you know, uh, here's the role that I'm playing. So that has to factor into my decision. Here's the role that I'm playing. So that has to factor into my decision, but you really looked at you. And I, I want to emphasize that because um, me being older, right? I hit those momentums in my life. I hit those plateaus in my life where I was like, okay, I have to make a decision. One was when I left my corporate job and everybody was like, are you kidding? Look at the money. Look at what you're leaving. You know, you have stability. You're going to be broke and homeless in X amount of time. I mean, they projected all kinds of stuff onto me about what I was going to be and what I was going to do. And, and my financial analyst was just as bad. She was like, oh, you'll be broke within a year. I was like, look at this. The nerve. Something to talk about. The nerve, right? But yet, it was about four or five years later, I had two coworkers call me back and say, you've been traveling all over the world. You are you look as happy as can be. What was your secret? What did you do? Tell me your secret, because I feel like I'm a slave to what I'm at right now. Yeah. And I would dare to say it's because you chose you. Regardless of what anyone thought about it. Sneeze, shaking, scared, fearful, but faithful. Everything. Confused, nervous, but trusting. But trusting. You don't have to take away negative things to go in a positive direction. You just focus on the positive things about whatever it, the negative circumstances around you. Because you're like, yeah, you're right. You may be right. I might be broken in here. But I guarantee everything that I lose, I'll get back double. Because I'm not going to quit. I'm not exactly. going to give up. I can exactly. lose it. But I know good and well, if I made it once, I can make it twice. And this time I can do it better because I've learned along the way. I've looked at myself. I've been honest with myself and saying, yes, you are good at this job. Yes, it doesn't make any sense for you to leave it. Other than the fact that Something is stirring in your soul. And something is calling you. That's it. That's it. And we ignore it. We ignore it all the time. We ignore it all the time. Or when we see it in somebody else, we are so passionate about what the status quo says to do that we're afraid to give them our consent. And I'm going to actually talk about my son. My youngest son um, came to me. And I'll never forget this because he was in college. And he was like, mom, I know that he went to University of Cincinnati and he had his internship. And he's like, I know that I have this internship and it's steady and I could stay here. And he said, but I want to quit. He said, I want to quit and I want to try for an internship somewhere else. Because if I don't quit and I don't try somewhere else, I'll never know if I could have gone somewhere better. And yeah. we supported him. It was like, OK, do what you have to do. OK, yeah. we got you. Go do it. And he ended up landing an internship in Hawaii and got to live in Hawaii and Hawaii hired him. Okay. That was one of his huge leaps. He'll, he's going to look when he's older and look back and understand that he took a leap. Something was calling within his heart that he had to do something different. Yeah. And, Mm -hmm. and when he came to the person who he respected to say, what do you think? It was like, you already know this. Right. You don't even need the outside validation. This is what you want to do. So you need to go do it. And he did. That's good. You know, the thing that I just heard and saw beautifully of someone running and looking back and also with someone walking forward and looking down and having to look up ahead. Many times we get a calling and we think that a calling is something that's bringing us forward or something that's bringing us back. But a calling is taking, is caught, is bringing you in mm. and it's keeping you exactly where you are. And now is the first step. It's not something that needs to be planned. 
It's not something that needs to be understood. It's something that needs to be accepted. And when you say, I don't know what it is, and I don't know where I'm going, but I accept it, I hear it, and I'm going with it, faithfully, maybe even fearfully, but I am going in. You know, we use that term, you know, like, let's go in, we going in, we going in. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Really, though, you know, when you get that tug, when you get that fire, when you get that burn, when you get that idea, you jumping out of the shower, water going everywhere because you got to get an ink pen. Don't stop at the writing. Start the thinking. Start the happiness of it. Get you a theme song about it. Roll yeah. around in that energy because that is the energy that creates worlds. Everything and started from that little fire. And not only that, but the whole thing is stop being afraid to act on it. Mm -hmm. Stop being afraid to dare to say, okay, I've got to stand up for what I want to do when everybody else is telling you, no, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then also understand that it comes in different ways. Like for me, it came in like, I needed to know my heritage. I needed to know my heritage. I needed to know my heritage. That's the way that spirit source decided to work through me to get me to move. Because what happened for me was that in looking for my heritage, I decided there's got to be another way to live. Mm -hmm. There's got to be another way to live. So mm -hmm. for me, they, 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 spirit, God utilized, I, I need to know about my heritage to there's got to be another way to live to the shift, the dare to stand in and say, yeah. I'm making a change. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Based on the fact that, okay, I choose a different way to live yeah. and I choose a different way to live because I want to explore what my ancestors and different cultures do. And, and, and I want to explore them across the world. And this is the interest that I have. And I, you know, I don't want to go back to school to, to, to learn about it. I want to live the experience. Yeah. Ooh, yes. I yes. want to live. Well, where are you going to go? I, I don't know. I went to California, I established my base and I was like, okay, spirit. And I decided I was going to do women's empowerment. And then I decided that, okay, I'm going to call 10 of my friends, see if they'll host me. Cause I got to, we got to work, we got to eat. Right. They hosted me and that those 10 friends ended up being 22 States and four countries later by word of mouth. Absolutely. And I didn't know it, if you told me I was doing that at the beginning of the year, I would have laughed at you. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. Yeah. Are you? No. We don't see any further than we see because we would have laughed at ourselves. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go. To, okay, yeah, I'm gonna 22 states yeah, and four yeah. countries. Right, right. You know, we we we. It's hard for us to believe. Yes, but the point is, is that it comes the way it comes. So mm -hmm. if your calling is saying just you know me making a suggestion to you, hey Carrie, you know what? You really need to go to Australia, and you go what? You really need to go to Australia. And then you get like chills and you're like, hmm, well, what's yeah. in Australia? Oh, you could do this. You could do that. And it resonates for you for some reason. Right. Maybe I was that delivery of the message yeah. that you were supposed to hear the whole time, the mm -hmm. whole time mm -hmm. to help you because you're teetering. You know, you need to do something, but you're not quite sure where, you know, you need to start somewhere, but you're not quite sure year, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right. We have yeah. to listen to what's presented to us in terms of if it resonates with us, if it resonates yeah. with that calling inside our hearts. Yeah. In that here yeah. and that. Yeah. Because it's that's in every it's shape different. and every size. Yeah. And you it, that's and that's what the definition of awareness is. You gotta pay attention to how you feel. If you feel a little off your rockers, because you are off your rocker. <laughs> if you feel smooth, it's because you're doing some smooth things. If you feel happy about it, it's because you've just invoked and touched on happiness. Keep poking it. Keep touching that. You know, but a lot of times we get so fixated on things that displeases us or it makes us feel incongruent. It's like, you know, poking at a bruise. Like you ever did that when you were a kid, especially like one of the first bruises you get and it just hurt, but it's tender, but you just go like, ooh. Ooh, you know, you just keep up. I want to do it for. It's so it's so apropos to life because we do that. 
we we engage in what makes us miserable. We're quick to do that. We're very yeah. hard to do what makes us feel truly, truly happy. It truly made me happy not being a slave to the corporate life and, and going to a structured eight to five job. I yeah. can't even be able to say it, but it took me 20 years to make that decision and come up with the courage and the bravery enough to, to, to dare to say, I don't want this anymore. And I look yeah. at all of the lives, they may have the big cars and the big this and the big that and the huge sellers, but they're miserable. Yeah. Yeah. Miserable. Nah, I, so I, I guess yeah. this is all that life has to offer. This is it. This is all I could do. Yeah. And it's not. It's never it's all not. you can do because it's never no. done. It's never over. It's always expanding. God is infinite. If God is infinite, if we can all agree that God is infinite, nothing ever ends. Nothing, nothing. ever ends. Time will not run out. And your idea will alley you to the next brain, build brilliant brain that will bring that to fruition. I promise you, whether you see it or not, you will see it because you'll be a part of it. You are an infinite possibility of anything that could possibly be. Period. It just is what it is that it overwhelms some people. Because, you know, they say, they, whoever that is, but it, it's actually a writer. I can't remember the, the, the author of it, but. Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate, but that we are powerful beyond measure. And that's yeah. kind of scary. And that is why a lot of people hesitate to go in because when you go in, ain't nobody there but you and God. That's it's right. God and your awareness of every experience that you've had because you were created. And exactly. in there is where the magic happens because what happens out here is only a filtering manifest filtered manifestation of what's inside. And if you don't like what's out here, you're gonna have to go back in here and clean some stuff up. And the way to do that is to see what are the things that I've been thinking about constantly. What are the main things that I think about on a regular basis? Is it revenge? Is it your block list on Facebook? Is it that try you if you drive a lot, do you have road rage? Um is it you tell, I'm going to tell you one thing that messed people up and hear me good. When you okay. have a story that happens in your day and you want to tell something about it and the story is negative and it puts you in a place where you're complaining or bitching, don't tell that story to nobody else. Let it stop with when, when the story happened because you keep stirring up muddy water soon as it settles and you can see clear again there's somebody called girl i gotta tell you what this, this what happened today those types of things seem so simple because you want everybody to know and you a good storyteller you get around up and you think it's funny but do you realize how much energy and time that you've taken away from setting your dial to positivity and I'm going to also expand on that, too, to say that we don't recognize as beings that we are powerful, right? Okay. So the power of our words perpetuating mm -hmm. is tremendous mm -hmm. and it, it's impactful. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about gearing up the energy behind something, you're gearing up the energy behind that negativity. Yeah. And, and you're keeping it going and keeping it going by repeating it and repeating it. And we talk about feeding energies. That's what's feeding an energy is the repetition of it and the recalling of it and the restating of it over and over and over and over again. And that's what we love to do. You know, oh, and, and oftentimes do. we don't see it as such a big thing either because we're like, well, well, it's the truth. It's exactly what happened. It ain't like I'm lying. Exactly, exactly. And the other piece of that too is that we also are looking at the content of it, uh, of what it contains, which is, did you give away your power when that was happening? Were you insulting and nasty when that's happening? So that, that's how you want to be seen. That's, that's yeah. what you want to share to everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. yes, it upset your day. Yes, it, 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 it changed the whole uh, uh, energy of your day because you allowed it, one. Right. Right. Because you perpetuated it too. And then that triangle of disempowerment, you were the perpetrator three, because you're still talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And then you don't even know the ripple effect of that negativity that you're spreading. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why a lot of us can't sleep because the water's been stirred up and it's mucky. That's why we get bored with our lives. Like, oh, the same thing over and over and over. Well, that's how you're living your life, by the stories you keep telling, by the things you keep doing, by the people you keep calling, by the places you keep going. We constantly go through these mundane things, and then we find ourselves living a mundane life. No, telling that story might not be the worst thing ever, but if it's keeping you in a place of stagnation, that's the worst. That's the worst is when nothing's happening because ain't nothing changing because you're talking about the same thing over and over and over again without any type of spark because when we feel that spark we don't even pay it to enough attention because we're too busy talking about something that's already happened again again i call it being stuck in the story it's like a dog chasing its tail you're stuck over yeah. and over you won't stop chasing your tail because you just want to stay in the story and and the story is drama and then if you want to stay in the drama well right there there there's your life. Yeah. Yeah. And I love having my life drama free. So yeah. I, I, I want to ask you a question. So there are many people who embody what we're talking about. Right. I don't know. Good, bad, or indifferent. They do. Right. They embody it. Okay. What would you say to those people? What is the next step or stage of allowing to move and navigate through these stories mm. because sometimes they need to hear it. They need to hear it outside of themselves because somebody's going to be listening, going, mm, that's me. I don't want to admit it, but oh, that, yeah, I do that. And, yeah, I do that too. And yeah, I do that too, you know, but with an opportunity, what would, what would you share? I have done this practice nearly all my life and it started with journaling because i love the act of actually writing because you can literally see your words being formed and you are creating words while you're creating your thoughts and it's all been documented and i love the sound you know of the writing i love the, everything about writing but i notice a lot of times especially as an adult we can give a lot of excuses about sitting still and writing because, you know, we got to do this and then this happens and it's, you're getting um, distracted, especially if you got children or roommates or siblings or whatever in the house. And it's hard to have that fluid thought. And one of the things that I transitioned into doing is started voice recording myself so that mm -hmm. I can actually play out my thoughts so that I can see and hear what's really going on inside of me because that gives me an indication of the things that I've held inside that I need to filter through because anything that has got my attention to the point that I feel like I can't shut up about it, I need to say something about it until I ain't got nothing else to say about it. I need to see that thought through. So what I'll do is I'll put on my voice recorder and I'll, like if I try to, if it, you know, sometimes, you know, we get people told in our head, but it keeps spinning and spinning and spinning and spinning. And every time you think of them, every time you see them, and every time, whatever, I'll put my voice record on and I'll say everything I need to say. But once I get done, my promise to myself is to now talk to myself about how I feel now that I've gotten it out. That's the step that I feel like a lot of people miss. Because if you tell it and you get it out, I'm like, whoa, that felt good, you know. You done got it out, but now you need to fill up. Now you got to go back in because you just you just spit out. Now it's time to go back in. Okay. And why did that feel so good? You know, because, you know, because she betrayed me. And I wanted to let her know that I knew that she betrayed me because she was trying to act like she didn't betray me. So what you really have a problem with is the fact that she lied to you. Yeah, because I don't like to be lied to because I like to tell the truth about certain things. Okay, so if a lie is what bothered you, what is it that you have been lying to yourself about? Turn it to you. Because a lie wouldn't bother you if a lie wasn't in you. Because people lie to you all the time. You're like, girl, whatever, I don't even care. But that lie will bother you if there's a lie within you. 
That harassment will bother you if there's some harassment within you. That deceit will bother you if there's some deceit within you. That abuse bothers you and is attracted to you if there's abuse within you. How, now, you may think it's slight that you eat a donut every day for breakfast and for lunch, but your body doesn't think it's so funny when your insulin levels are going up, and that is a form of abuse. Because if you know before you eat what you eat that it's going to do what it does, that's you saying, I don't care that it's going to hurt you. I'm going to hurt you anyway. Simple. You really are. You may not see it that way. But if you say, if you if you got Bino right now, that means that you know you're going to eat anyway what's going to mess you up. And you're going to mm -hmm. buy some Bino to try to ward it off before you do it. Knowing you, you don't need to be doing it anyway. Just simple. Exactly. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. It's spiritual. Because spiritual is going as close to God as possible. And when they say cleanliness is the closest thing to godliness, they weren't talking, they weren't talking about a bath. They're talking about no. what do you have inside that's sitting there rotten. So exactly. that things get filtered through you is stinking up your experience. Clean it up in the inside. And that's the closest. I love this. I love this. Because you know what you're doing. And I'm I'm gonna just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure that the audience understands exactly what's taking place here. What's taking place here is that you are teaching people how to live not only in the here and now, but to take inventory of yourself, to yes. look yourself in the mirror and ask yes. yourself, how do I lie to myself so that you can be honest in all yeah. that you in all that you do and how to do this on a daily basis. And this is your approach. Now, you may not like to journal, but then you can record what you're saying. If you don't yeah. like to record, then there's another way to be able to do it. You Always. can put up the of what you do it, but reflect it back. Because the bottom mm. line is that this is how you deal with the here and now. Notice that you didn't say you didn't go back to the past and talk no. about, oh, what I did in the past, and this yeah. is what I did in the past, and this is what hurt me. So that's what's going to happen now. You know, you're not doing all of that digging up the old stuff in order for that old stuff to try to guide you somewhere because it doesn't guide you. All it does is teach you how to repeat the same patterns until you break it, which is what you're talking about in the first place. So I wanna highlight to our audience how important and how imperative what you said is because that's learning how to live in the here and the now, not the future of what's gonna come and not the past of, oh, but it happened to me and this is why I feel this way. No, 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 no. I feel this way right here, right now, because I was lied to, I was this, I was that and the other, and this is why it bothers me. Now, why does it bother me so much? Boom, look in the mirror. Yeah. Look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I that love was an issue that I had with um, a friend, and it was just like, you know, like, I feel like they don't ever follow through. And I was like, I started thinking, and I was like, one or two things can happen. I can say something to them or I can say something to me because something's going to be said because either I'm going to think about it in my head and keep saying it to me or I'm going to try to release it and thinking saying something to them will stop me talking about it in my head. Even if I were to have to say something to them and they change their behavior because I said something to them, I promise you something else will do what they were doing. If you haven't worked it out within you. It'll show up some other way. So say, for instance, that you're having an issue with depend people being dependent, right? Somebody didn't show up to pick up your kid, right? So you switch the babysitters, and then this babysitter is wonderful. Then your car break down when you just got a new car. You be right. like, well, I'm just going to get a new car. And then somebody who always said, you know, a, a client who pays you Johnny on the spot every time is late on that payment. And then you fire the client. That dependency flaw is going to follow you everywhere you go and in any instant that it can possibly show up, but not to annoy you, but to remind you, you need to be more dependable. You need to be more dependable. Because if you are more dependable, the 
on people that aren't dependable won't be attracted to you. Situations that aren't dependable won't be attracted to you. Things breaking down won't be in your experience. It won't. Because if you are dependable, I guarantee you, anytime that there's a flaw, immediately something will be there to support it. Dependability will show up when you are dependable. And then the circumstances of dependability, you know, you think it's something that's independent. You won't even recognize it because now you're tuned into dependability. And now you're saying, oh, my God, I'm so glad I got AAA. Oh, my goodness, I'm so glad my mom was home when I called her. Oh, my goodness, I'm so glad that this, that, and the, and the other. Because dependability will show up. It doesn't mean your th things are still not going to happen. But your support, your support will show up when you start to support you. When you are dependable for you, nothing can happen that the resources won't show up once you release yourself from the things that you don't want to happen and start being resourceful with yourself. Things will still go wrong, but resources will always show up right in the nick of time. And that's Thank where your focus and awareness will be. Nothing changes but your perspective and how clean you are and how godly you are. I love this because the other piece of this too is that there are those who are hearing it for the first time and then there are those who are trying to live it, right? And then there are those of us who are living it and we're, and we're the observers of it, right? But one of the things that I learned even being an observer of it or trying to live it is that when it comes, express the gratitude. Mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. what happens is that like you're contemplating i i don't want to work for this 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 way and i'm going to change my job right and mm -hmm. so you change a job i've changed my job i've, I've lived it i'm living it right i changed mm -hmm. my job and okay the money isn't consistent and i'm like okay spirit i need to be able to figure out how i'm going to do x y and z and i don't know how i'm going to do it and so with the nine to five, we know exactly when it's supposed to come, blah, 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 blah. But see, here in this new shift in phase, you have to trust. And you have to trust the fact that you may not necessarily know what direction is going to come in, how it's going to come, but that it's going to come, right? Yeah. They have done some efforts, but there's no guarantees, right? Because that person who pays on time versus that person who's not paying on time today, you know? You have to just trust that it comes. And this, when I first stepped out, oh, this was very real. This is very, very real. Not, not was. This is very, very real. Because even when you deal with an entrepreneur, it's very, very real. But the thing about it is that we make these humps and it comes. And we're like, yeah. oh my God, that came just, just in time, blah, 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 blah. And you're on to, but how am I going to do this? But you never said thank you for that. Yeah. You yeah. never stopped and paused and said, universe, thank you. S source, God, thank you. Thank you for allowing it to flow. And thank you for, and, and gratitude for knowing that it, I'll always have enough. Mm -hmm. It will yeah. always flow to me. I am like a river that flows mm -hmm. in the ocean or I am like a river that flows always. And it always flows to me with ease and grace, right? Mm -hmm. So here it is flowing, floating to me, but yet I'm so much in my anxiety of it coming, Ooh. my anxiety See? of how it's going to come, my anxiety of if it's going to come, that when it comes, I have no gratitude expressed. I have right. no thought. I have no, wow, okay. This is how it's got to flow. Maybe it could be right up until the very day that you needed that 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 money or that flow or or that situation to change or the shift to take place up until the very moment. Mm -hmm. But isn't that what happens in our lives? Isn't that what miracles are about? Isn't that what divine alignment is all about? It's about the fact that we trust up into the moment that it happens. That is the divine timing. Yeah. That's it. And that's the shift because we are a, a, um, a, 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 a body that loves instant gratification. 
the way that we are, live now, the need has to be met right now. I called you, Carrie, why aren't you picking up the phone? You know, you said you were going to the store. You pick up that phone when I call you. Where, where are you, girl? I just called you. How come you didn't call me back? You didn't emoji me back. You didn't emoji me back. I emoji you. Where's my emoji back? You know? Or, I said where are you? Say? Did, did they? Oh, she, I called that girl. She didn't call me back. And she told me she called me back. And I know she didn't call me back. We do all of that. We want the instant gratification right here, right now, this moment. My need is now fix my need. Fill my need right now. Mm -hmm. And we forgot, we have forgotten. Because I lived at a time where there was no cell phone. Right? So we went out as children. Children don't even know how to live anymore. They don't even know how to, to have fun anymore. Mm -hmm. My mother said, be home when the street light came on. I was gone all day long. I was on my oh, bike I was here. I was over there. I, I would ride my bike 21 miles away, but I would be back when that street light came on. And my mother didn't have to worry about me. All this track my track your friend crap. Yeah. Right? Oh, uh, what is it? 360. Trust we can't trust anything. No, no, no. You know, somebody might be gone. You might be this. You might. You know, those those situations existed when we didn't have the technology still. They still exist. But because we have a capability, we, we feel that we can't exist without it. We forgot. I think that um, technology and the application of technology, this, the vast expansion of technology and the... Um, energetic interference of technology really does dull our instincts because yes, we don't have to rely on our intellect and our spiritual intellect as much um to to the average person uh spelling don't even worry about that you know everything I seen something on Facebook the other day. It was like 17 letters in a row. And people was like, ah, ha, ha, ha. This. I'm like, what does that even say? But it was an acronym for something. But it was just 17 random, not so random letters, like an acronym. And I'm just like, I'm not even going to waste my time to try to figure out which each one of these letters mean. By going, you know, because you got to go through the comments, see what they're saying and what the reference point is and try to get a premise of what's going on. You know, we, we, we shorten stuff so much, like you're saying, and I call it the microwavable society. We shorten stuff and got cut, shortcuts for everything. We don't even use all the words. We don't even say the whole word, um, cuz, sus. Oh, you, know, you guys don't even know all, the half of it. You know, I, so I'm going to interrupt you on this one because, yeah. and I'm sorry, but it, this is passionate <laughs> with me because I lived it and I'm living it, right? Because I had... 60 years old at the end of this month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what it's like to see somebody who can't even remember a phone number because the machine does it for you all the time. I, 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 my mother used to say something like, my mother said this, the brain is a muscle that needs to be exercised too. And if you don't exercise it, you're going to lose it. The technology is wonderful for those who are programming it because they're exercising their brains. But for those who are receivers of the technology, yeah. and I, I don't know how to put this any other way, but you're getting dumber and dumber and dumber and dumber. You're not yeah. memorizing your phone numbers. At least when you had a rotary phone and you had a push button phone, you had to memorize all of your friends' phone numbers. You had to memorize your phone number. If you didn't talk to your family member and 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 lost your phone could you remember half your family numbers phone numbers probably not you'd be no lost. Way. i could call my mama and i can call me <laughs> and 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 that's sad and it hit me too because like my partner i i couldn't call him because we have an african number we have a u.s number we, i knew the u.s number but i didn't know the african number right yeah. so you know the more that machines and things think for you, and remember these machines are only as smart as the people who program them. 
it's right. still human intellect. It's still human intellect. And yeah. now everybody's adding with the AI and AI here and AI there. So people aren't writing their own uh, 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 paragraphs anymore. People anything. aren't writing their own anything. <laughs> they're not doing anything. So what happens when, when you don't move enough, your muscles atrophy and you atrophy and you get enough people atrophied, you, you have dormant bodies laying around. Yeah. And, and then what happens? What and happens? Not just your body, because with the way the technology moves, it's, it's also energy. It's also yes. the way yes. it hurts. It's um, frequencies. Yes. EMF uh, directly impacts, impacts the... Uh, Oh, why am I? I'm not thinking right now. The, the Vegas, third the third eye, Vegas, all of it. That's all connected. The whole Vegas thing. All connected. Where I'm going with this? More than your body atrophy. You know what another name for atrophy is? A block chakra. A block chakra because you got energy, right? We know energy can't be created or destroyed, but it sure can spin in a circle and yeah. block the flow of which you can communicate. So yes. when we're talking about all these um, condensed versions, quick versions of stuff, shortcuts, um, acronyms, you are shortening the communication that you have for these conversations that need to be had within oneself. Yeah. So so at, so it within, so without, so without, we put it in. And we want to shorten everything. We want to quicken everything. And we do the same thing with what we, with the time we spend with ourselves. We don't know ourselves that much because we shorten it so much because we limit to do my hair look all right? Do this outfit match? Do I smell good? And I'm going on my day. But have yeah. I cleaned up all that mess that I have been thinking and feeling? You know, yeah. we think if we put it on and we give a quick fix and we look and fly. And everything, and we smell. Look, like I say, all the good, looking good, smelling good, feeling, feeling good, all the good. But you gotta. It, what's what's good on the inside? What's yeah. what's really good? what's really good? And you gotta yeah. think about that thing. Like you, it ain't no shortcut to you. You gotta go straight in. It ain't okay. that. I mean, there ain't no shortcut to you. You gotta make the journey back to yourself, and it's the same journey that took you away. You got to go through that thicket. You got to go through that thicket. You got to cut all that stuff down on your way back. You know, you can't just think you're going to go in without going through what took you out. Exactly. Exactly. You got to look at that stuff. That's what the shadows are about. It is. It is. Do you know we are coming up on an hour and I, I like to keep it to an hour. Oh my God. I could talk to you forever, forever. What is it that you want to leave our audience with? What are the, what, something to contemplate or a mantra, but what is it that you would like to leave them with? And then also let them know how they can reach you. All right. Well, you can reach me at my website. It's www.atbaimpactgroup.com. Email is the same, atbaimpactgroup at gmail.com. But on Facebook is the best place because I actually like to have conversations. I don't check my email very often. Just going to put that out there. But if you find me, Carrie Irene Crosby on Facebook, just inbox me and say, hey, just inbox me and say hello. If there's something that I've said that you want more information about or you just want to have a conversation about, hit me up. Like I am so down for a good, creative conversation always. And the one thing that I would like to leave with everybody is the I want to make sure that you understand that every single thing is your decision. Everything. Whether you choose to listen to someone or not, whether you choose to go somewhere or not, whether you choose to think something or not. Because I can tell you right now, a lot of like, I just can't control my thoughts. Think, you know, you know, you, you think anything right now. Just think about something you want to eat right now. See how you did that? Yeah, you can do that with anything. You can do that with anything. And it's your decision what you choose to focus on. Every single person right now probably focuses on a different type of food in a different type of way, cooked exactly like you wanted because you tasted it, because you know what that's like for you. Spend time doing that more often. 
every decision you make, think, taste it. What's it taste like? Does it taste good? Does it feel good? Is it right for you? Is it really what you want? Is it because someone else did it? There's this one story that I'm going to tell right quick, and it, it, it'll solidify, you know, realizing that you are the, 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 the final decision maker. There was a lady who, every time she cooked a ham, <clears throat> she cut the end of the ham off. <clears throat> And they always say she made the best ham, but then like it must be a trick to that. Like it must must be something about cutting that end off. And then one day, you know, as her daughter, you know, grew over the years, and you know, like you know what, she was about time for her to start making her own turkey. She was like, I need to ask my mama why she cut the end of that ham off like that. It's got to be some kind of family trick, and whatever. So she's like, Mama, why did you cut the end of the ham off whenever you cook it? She was like, What? She's like, You cut the end of the ham off, and she was like, Oh yeah, I always done that. She's like, Well, why did you do it? She was like. I don't know. She's like, you don't know. Like, why Like, why didn't you randomly just cut? Well, that's how my mama cooked it. She said, well, you don't know why your mama did it. No, I just thought the like, just could take him. She was like, we got to ask grandma why she did that. So next next time to cook the ham, grandma come up like, grandma. So, okay, I asked mama why she cut the end of the ham off. And she said she didn't know because she saw you do it. So why do you cut the end of the ham off? She's like, Really, it ain't no reason. She was like, I thought this was, you told me that's how I cooked the ham. Yeah, I told you that's how I cooked the ham back then, but because that was the only way to get the ham, the fifth part. Y'all, buy a bigger pot. Buy a bigger pot, y'all. We make these decisions based on things that we don't even investigate. And then we blindly go through our lives and we're wondering why we're not happy, why we're not pleased, why we're not content, why we're not succeeding. It's because we're basing our decisions on what worked for somebody else. When you know good and well, deep in your gut, that some of the things that you're doing and some of the people that you're with, your spouses, your lifelong partners that you're supposed to, to death, death do you part that you don't even like? And you are too scared to be honest with yourself because at some point you made a decision based on what someone else thought was best for you. When you knew that that wasn't for you, that person wasn't for you, that job wasn't for you, that food wasn't for you, that trip wasn't for you, that vacation even wasn't for you. Sometimes we just go on vacation to five and we know we should have saved that money to invest in our business. You can put one vacation off. Every decision you make is a result, will result in something that you see. Every decision you make will result in something that you will see. Know that. Beautiful. Everybody, this is Carrie Irene Crosby. She is a phenomenal coach. She is a phenomenal human being. Carrie, I can't thank you enough for being on The Infinite Way with us. It Thank was you. Pleasure. I want to reserve the right. I want. I want to reserve the right to invite you back again. Absolutely, I reserve the right to come back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, and thank you everybody for joining us. And this has been another episode of the Infinite Way, where spirituality meets humanity. Take care. Mm -hmm. Bye. Very good. <laughs>